Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today with the all-new Lincoln Electric Power MIG 220 AC DC unit. So, we've had a lot of questions about this unit um, in comparison videos and stuff, and people have been asking, you know, what I guess what are the ten best things about this whole unit comparatively to the competition? So, just right off the rip, I mean, right in this video, we're going to go with the ten things. But first thing, seven-inch screen, easy to read. I mean, you can clearly see what you're doing. Go into the process menu, super easy. Everything's all very clear, very well written, big, seven inches, it's huge. It's the biggest one on the market for the 220. So like they said, this one's for like the home hobby guys that are just starting out or they want to learn how to TIG weld aluminum or TIG weld steel or they want to MIG weld, stick weld, so it's an all in one thing. But you know, it's very nice for people who are just starting out, super nice to do. So let's just go over the stick here real quick. I'll click on it and go into it. Next, one of the best things about it, guided setup, right? If I'm new to this and I don't know what I'm doing and I want crisp or soft, I'm gonna go crisp. And this thing does run 6010, as you can see right there. I'm gonna click on that. What size rod? Okay, we're gonna go eighth inch. What size plate? Quarter inch. And then it gives me one of the other best things about it, polarity setup. So making sure that my polarities are correct It'll tell me which ones where, you know what I mean? You confirm, and you hit confirm, and it'll pop you in there. So basically, and then also one of the better things is it gives you a recommended setting for that particular plate size, the rod size, the electrode that you're running, and then obviously you can do different things with weld mode, weld mode settings on there, and then memory setup. But very easy to set up. Another good thing about this thing here, is the inside. So if you're more of a, you don't know, really want to mess with that or jump right into it, you can just, right here, go into manual mode, pick everything out. It gives you your sizes, uh, amperages, so you size material, then it'll give you an amperage recommended. So basically, MIG, flux core, spool gun, stick, and TIG. So it has everything in there. It just gives you all the recommended stuff. So if you're brand new to this and you're like, well, I don't know what to run that at on this piece of you know, piece of material that I have, it's all right on the inside, or it's in the machine, you just gotta find it by toggling through in your guided setup. Super easy to do. Another beautiful thing about this thing, it comes with everything for everything to start out. So stick, tick, big, everything to do, it comes with a spool of wire. I mean, so basically all you need is a gas bottle if you want a MIG weld. Uh, other than that, you're ready to rock. Some stick electrode, you're ready to go. Super easy, runs 6010, another great thing about it. No problems there. Uh, we, you'll see that in my other video link down below. Uh, runs 7018, runs a plethora of other rods too. I know some people like 7014, 7024, 6013, 6011. Everyone like those different rods for the farm and that sort of thing. Runs all that. Um, comes with a flex head TIG torch, which is awesome. Not industry standard at all. That, that's pretty new to this whole thing, so it comes with a flex head. A um, lot of comments on that. People wanted a flex head TIG torch, so they'd actually they'd buy an extra one, but this one just comes with it. So that's pretty awesome. And the thing itself comes with the adapter plug. So 110, 220. Um, I got it plugged in the 220 right now, but it has the 110 adapter plug. It has two gas solenoids in there. So one for TIG and one for MIG. So you just put your gas in there. Comes with a regulator, comes with everything set up, ready to go on that, on that side of things. Awesome little piece of equipment. Um, it has the visual display, so right when I'm in my guided setup, I can adjust my amperages or my voltages on my mix, and it'll show me what the bead's going to do and, and how it's affected when I change my voltage or my amperage or my wire feed speed, that sort of thing. Uh, another good thing, 3 plus 2 warranty, 3-year warranty. You can buy an extra 2-year warranty on this unit, so you can have up to 5-year warranty, which is awesome. Uh, been very, very popular. And I would recommend buying the extra warranty if it were me, just because for the small amount of money that you're going to pay, you get an extra two years. And we've seen a lot of older style equipment that's come back, right? Uh, you know, the, the older equipment, this is obviously brand new to the market, but when it comes back, usually after year four, five, six, seven, that's when stuff starts breaking if you're using it a lot. Uh, the people that don't use it a lot, we don't see very many of those come back at all. I mean, they run. Forever. So, pretty awesome piece of equipment. Uh, fairly light too. 
think we weighed it in our last video, it was 53 pounds. Um, another thing too, they got a molded aluminum power block right there for your MIG. So everything's all steel, no chintzy plastic stuff. All very, very nice. Uh, you can fit an 11 pound spool in there. You can tuck your TIG torch up in there if you're just going to TIG weld with it. You can put your stinger up in there for stick welding. Like I said, though, this machine comes with everything. Duty cycle is really, really good. Uh, I think at 200 amps on 220, we're at 100%. So very good duty cycle on this unit. Uh, 120, it's a little bit lower, obviously, because we're only pulling off of 120. I always like to tell people if you're going to run it off a generator, at least at least like 9,000 watt generator, if not more, 10,000 watt, 11,000 watt generator would be preferred to run these inverter style machines if you're going to run them out in the field. Uh, just because you need that extra power to run this stuff and then you won't have any problems with circuit breakers popping or that sort of thing. And if you're going to run on 110, another thing I like to tell people, just Make sure you got a good circuit. I would say at least a 20 amp breaker on that circuit. Don't put it on like a 15 amp breaker. And if you do, make sure you're close enough to the power block or the, or the circuit breaker itself with that plug. Uh, so many times I see people, they plug them into 110, it's 100 feet from their circuit breaker, and yeah, you're gonna pop the circuit breaker on 110. I mean, these things are, you know, they're, they're, they're nice that they can run 110, but they need good power on 110 to run. So, so basically, that's the top 10 things on these on this new 220. If you got any questions, leave them down below. We'll do our best to answer them. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for some more.